experiencing hierarchy as the archetypical model of organization from our birth up to our death. We're going to the kindergarten and Normally, there's a hierarchy. We're going to school, there's hierarchy. We're going to the college, university, there's a hierarchy. All around us is hierarchy. So this is a kind of organizational archetype. We are so influenced by this culture and by this structure of organizations because we normally we make no other experiences. We have no idea normally how to work without a boss. This is really something new for most of us. This guy is right. I have never thought about it like this way. What is this TV show about? Corporate democracy? Let me Google that. What is corporate democracy? Okay, first things first. Let me have a look on the definition. Corporate democracy is about how do the different people that are involved in making firms work, so different stakeholders like consumers, employees, suppliers, all these different people, even local communities, how, how do they have a role in or have a say in how firms operate? That sounds interesting. I want to know more. Let's go back to the search results. Okay, first, corporates have become political actors and influence our personal life. And second, the core of corporate democracy is stakeholder participation. The second point is clear for me. Stakeholders are all interest groups that benefit or are harmed by corporate decisions. Corporate democracy involves them in a democratic way, just as Professor Crane pointed out. But the first point, what is meant by political actors? Ah, I see, this relates to the question, why do we need corporate democracy? Everybody uses social media or online media on a daily basis. And companies decide which posts we see and which we don't see. Therefore, companies have power. They shape our perception of the reality. Also, increasing financial resources are allocated by companies. This allocation influences the whole society. We have the need for legitimation. Companies should be legitimized in a democratic way and the allocation should meet the needs of the society. This can be called social gap. Now I understand the concept of corporate democracy. It seems reasonable for me. But on the other hand, is this realistic? Is there a corporate democracy in the real world? Let me search for that. Seems like there are some real world examples. Oh, that's the guy from the TV show. There is no gold standard for transformation. There is no blueprint because the situation is so different due to very different cultures, to the different histories of the organizations, to the different branches or industrial sectors and so on. Because of this, you have to develop a very individual path all the time. It's, it's a very customized process. And it's a long run, it's, it's, a, it's a long tail. It's not about making fast transitions or transformations in one or two years because people have to figure out how to act in special situations. They have to figure out what it means to, to work agile, to work self-organized. All this needs a lot of time to make this a kind of routine, a positive routine. So patience is very important too. This is clear. Every company is different and corporate democracy is no low hanging fruit for companies. The process of implementing corporate democracy takes time and needs patience. But such companies as Unternehmensdemokraten show that companies are interested in concepts of stakeholder participation. Let me go back to the search results. Now I want to get to know one of those companies. Premium Cola. Hmm. I think I heard about them before. What were their reasons to implement corporate democracy? How do they involve different stakeholders? What was their individual way to corporate democracy? Let's find out. Well, in the very beginning, I was the founder of the company and I had no experience in the drinks industry. I had no knowledge about logistics, about finances, about structures, about strategies at all. So I figured if I would be deciding about the company just because I own it, this would be a very stupid idea. So I asked everybody involved, the trucking companies, the accounting people about their needs, about their experience, about their knowledge. 
and then I try to decide with them in a democratic fashion because I figured this would be the best way to come up with the best quality of decisions. Then we just continued to do this and have found it to be very efficient. We work with 1,700 commercial partners. We don't have written contracts with them, so we are flexible all the time to renegotiate. And we didn't have a single lawsuit in all these years as well. So I'm giving the broad statement that corporate democracy takes a little bit longer in the beginning, but mid-term and long-term, it gets you rid of so many problems that it's absolutely the way to go if you run a company. Until today, I'm still the owner, so I could decide on my own today, but I think it would be very stupid to do so. They seem to have a successful business model. Now, let's take a look into the bare numbers. What does research say? Is there any empirical evidence for that? I think the most important finding of our recent paper on stakeholder democracy is the following. So usually one of the major objections um, um, against stakeholder democracy is that it would be completely inefficient if everybody would be able to decide on everything. However, what we find is that in reality, not every stakeholder wants to decide on everything. Our research was conducted as an experiment in a real company, and we find that stakeholders actually only want to co-decide on questions which they find, for example, relevant for themselves or when they feel competent to make a decision. So the scientific literature has actually produced a, a very comprehensive body of evidence uh, that moving towards more stakeholder participation or democracy is not only the right thing to do from an ethical perspective, but also the smart thing to do from an economic perspective. What I learned is that research paints overall a positive picture of corporate democracy, but it is crucial to take a closer look on when stakeholders actually want to co-decide. Wait, I've got lost in Googling. Mr. Zeug, as we approach the end of the show, this is your opportunity to give a final statement about corporate democracy. For us, our work is not only about supporting organizations during their process of transformation, but for us, it's very, very important to understand that becoming a more democratic organization means so much to society too, because of the spillover effect. If you're working in a, in a democratic organization for years and years and years, you're building a much stronger democratic self-efficacy expectation, which helps you a lot as a citizen. And this is in our more or less perhaps crisis of democracy at the moment is a very, very important part for us too. Oops, now I missed the whole show. <laughs>